It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry LeSeur and August Texier, Chief Editorial Writer for the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Maurice Couve de Murville, French Ambassador to the United States. Oh, this may be the first appearance of the new French Ambassador on American television. Couve de Murville is no stranger to this country. He's made friends and influenced people from Washington to the council chambers of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Mr. Ambassador, we're happy to roll out the red carpet of friendship to you, but I must confess that the people of this country are a bit uh, critical of France for some reasons. I wonder if you have any answers to those criticisms. Well, I suppose you are referring mainly to uh, the political instability of France which uh, the friends of France abroad are worried about and which, of course, the Frenchmen are, more, are even more worried about. I think that this political instability is due to two main reasons. One is the constitution of France, which is drawn in such a way that the executive is too weak and maybe the legislative is too powerful. Another reason, I think, is that the proportional representation, which is our electoral system, uh, gives always a sort of splic a splitting of the political parties, the consequence of which is that the political parties are too uh, numerous. This is, of course, a weakness, but I must underline that Behind this political instability, uh, there is all the same in my country, a very permanent stability, which is manifested mainly uh, by the stability of the administration, the civil service, as you call it, I think, uh, which doesn't change with the government, which is permanent. It is true that the, your predecessor, Monsieur Bonnet, was here for 10 years, wasn't he? Yes. In this country. Well, I think this is a very good example of what I was calling the stability of the administration in uh, France. Does that mean, that Mr. Ambassador, that you expect to be here for 10 years too? Well, I couldn't predict what will be going on with me. My answer would be that I would, of course, be very pleased if this happened. Um, well, Mr. Ambassador, turning to the, from the political to the economic field, there are certain uh, worries that Americans always have about the French economic situation. What would you say of that? Well, I would say on that that uh, you, know, you don't need worry now. The economic situation of France, as well, I think, as the economic situation of all the countries of the free world, is steadily improving. Uh, in France, now the period of reconstruction is completely over and the production is again developing uh, very much. Uh, for instance, I could say that the industrial production uh, of France is now a little more, I think, than 50% over the industrial production of the pre-war period. And on the other hand, uh, the inflation, which had been a menace uh, in the seven or eight years after the war, is now completely checked. And I think I don't exaggerate in saying that uh, the stability of the in the monetary field in is now completely re-established, which is, uh, I think, a, a good sign of economic health. Mr. Ambassador, the uh, important committees of the uh, French Senate have given uh, rather solid majorities to the Paris agreements on German rearmament. What conclusions should we draw from those uh, passages and majorities? Well, I think it's a, it's a very good omen for uh, the final ratification of the Paris agreements by the Council of the Republic, which is, as you know, the last step uh, in the uh, process of ratification of those Paris Accords by our Parliament. 
I think that uh, the majority in the Foreign Relations Committee in the Council of the Republic was a, a big one, and I hope that uh, it's a sign that those accords will now be ratified by the Council itself in the near future. The uh, French uh, Prime Minister, Monsieur Four, has said, I think, that once these accords are ratified, that the next stage for France will be uh, building the hydrogen bomb. Is that, does that seem to you like a good idea? Well, I should say that's quite another proposition. <laughs> but of course, it's a very important problem. And I think that uh, my country, as well as all the big powers wi with an army and a big military effort to maintain, uh, my country has to be worried with that problem. Because more and more, the atomic weapon is becoming a normal weapon in the modern army. And I don't believe that such an army could be maintained at a high level of efficiency in the future without having atomic weapons. Whether that will be done soon in France, I can't know. And then, of course, it's a, it's a tremendous job to be made. But what I can answer to your question is that it is certainly a problem, and we will have to deal with it. Uh, Monsieur Ambassador, France, of course, is a world power, so I'd like to uh, run around the world, if I may, figuratively, of course. Uh, <laughs> now, we've heard rumors of friction between the French and the American military in uh, free Vietnam, South Vietnam. What is at the bottom of those rumors? Well, I don't think there is anything, uh, there is anything real in those rumors. I've heard of them also, but I've heard also very often repeated uh, that the cooperation between the two high-ranking officials which are in Indochina now for the American uh, side and for the French side, I mean General Collins and General Ailey, that cooperation is very good. And I think it's really the basis of the situation now. There may be difficulties uh, between friendly and, uh, friendly and free countries. There are always uh, di discussions. Points of view are not always the same. It's quite natural. But when there is a friendly spirit, those difficulties and always be solved. Do you think as a result of that cooperation that South Vietnam, Free Vietnam, will remain an independent country and not become communist? Well, it's of course, it's of course difficult to predict the future. I think that what's important in South Vietnam now is two things. One, that the close cooperation which exists for the time being between the Americans and the French goes on. And the second is that the Vietnamese government uh, should be steadily strengthened. If those two conditions are fulfilled, uh, I think there is some hope that the South Vietnam can be defended against the communist men menace. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, France's uh, chief sphere of influence seems to me to be in uh, North Africa. Now, the previous uh, Premier of France, Mandus France, uh, did uh, enact uh, laws which gave more power to the Arab natives of North Africa. Do you think that the present government of Mr. Four will continue along those lines? I don't, I don't think that on the basic principles of our policy in North Africa, the new government that has taken the place of uh, Mr. Mandus France government uh, will uh, do something, uh, to do anything different. I think the principles will be the same, which is uh, uh, granting uh, progressively more and more political autonomy to uh, the states of North uh, Africa. Maybe in some, uh, some problems the methods could be different, maybe for some specific question the practical solution w would not be the same, but that doesn't matter really. I think in general that the policy won't be changed. Well, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you say if the policies aren't changed, what actually is the philosophy of the new Premier of France, Monsieur Edgar Faure? Are they widely different from Amanda's France in any way? 
Well, I should say, uh, to that, I should say that it's more a problem of personality than a problem of policy. I think uh, Monsieur Edgar Faure is more the middle of the road, the type of man. Uh, Mr. Madis Faust was a very strong personality with very definite views on all the problems. Uh, Monsieur Edgar Faure uh, may uh, it probably uh, he has, of course, uh, very definite views on the problems, but uh, his way of getting to the solutions may be a bit different from those of his predecessor. Will he seek, do you think, the constitutional reforms that you spoke of as being necessary? I, I'm quite sure uh, he is, as many Frenchmen, anxious to change uh, some parts of the Constitution. You saw that in our Parliament those last days, a proposal was made by a former Prime Minister of France uh, to, uh, to, uh, to change drastically some parts of the Constitution. And this has already had a great following. Mr. Ambassador, of course, you've had uh, much experience throughout the world. You've been in Russia, you've been in Egypt, uh, you've been at the councils of the NATO powers. Do you feel that the world is moving towards war, or is it possibly moving towards peace? That's a very difficult question to answer, of course. And I don't want to answer it with too much wishful thinking. But I should say, in the main, that my impression is rather optimistic. I think the prospects of peace are better now than they were, let's say, three or four years ago, for instance, when the Korean War began. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador Kubzmavir. Great pleasure to have you here tonight. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and August Hexer. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Maurice Coup de Murville, French Ambassador to the United States. Longines is indeed helping to make important sports news. In this month of March, there are 22 major sports events on the Longines calendar. For the official timing of these, some $100,000 worth of Longines Olympic timers, the world's finest timing watches, will be employed. Among these front page events are the United States Nationals and the United States Olympic Ski Trials at Franconia in New Hampshire, the American International Ski Meet at Stowe, Vermont, the Knights of Columbus track meets in New York and in Cleveland, the Chicago Daily News meets at Chicago, the Eastern International Swimming Championship at New Haven, Connecticut, the NCAA and the AAU Basketball Championships in Kansas City and in Denver, and the Mobile Gas Economy Run, Los Angeles to Colorado Springs in Colorado. The Longines watches used for timing these sporting events are blood brothers to the Longines watches, which are so conclusively the first choice of discriminating men and women on five continents. Longines watches are as outstanding for elegance as for greater accuracy. Longines watches are made to an ideal of perfection, which has guided its makers for close to a century. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, the television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.